Right now, Apple has an awesome lineup of laptops. Powerful, long battery life, well built with very little heat you feel or fan noise you hear. Well, at least it seems that way from the surface, but delve a little deeper and there are some pretty major pitfalls that you need to be aware of when choosing which one to buy. So today, I'm bringing you my ultimate guide of which MacBook you should buy and what you should configure it with. Now, I know you want me to just cut the crap and tell you the answer, but before I do, you must hear the following bit of advice as it will flat out save you hundreds of dollars. Firstly, Apple stock configurations of MacBooks, they frequently go on sale at retailers. Apple themselves though, do not put them on sale. Don't be the Muppet who paid full price for a Mac laptop at an Apple store, when you could have bought the exact same laptop for $200 off two blocks down the road. Make sure to check websites like ours that track the best prices on Mac laptops so that you're informed of these sales. Second, I strongly recommend buying a base model MacBook and not customizing it. That's if you can. That's because, as I said, retailers regularly put those on sale. Custom configurations, on the other hand, normally need to be bought from Apple themselves, and therefore you miss out on those sales prices. Even if you can customize a MacBook through a retailer, the discounts they offer are normally a lot less. So rather than customize, it's often better to just step up an entire model. Now, this leads me to my next point. Don't buy a MacBook thinking it will be your last laptop. Apple laptops have extremely high resale value when compared to PCs. Instead of investing a ton of money on expensive upgrades to future-proof your Mac, consider putting away that money so you can replace the whole laptop more frequently. For example, let's say you've got your heart set on buying a MacBook Air with M2, and you're considering upgrading it with 16 gig of memory and one terabytes of storage so that you'll be covered in the future. The base MacBook Air costs $1,400, the upgrades add an additional 400. And because it's a custom configuration, you will likely miss out on one of those regular $200 off sales. So the real effective cost for you for those upgrades is actually $600, not 400. What you could do instead is put that $600 away, then when a new model comes out, you sell your base model MacBook Air, add in the money you saved, and bam, you can now afford a new one, which in all likelihood will be much better and probably have the additional customizations that you were going to add anyway. Look, I've been pretty tough on Apple's upgraded configs, but I want to be clear, I'm not against them. When it comes to Apple, you should only buy them if you know that you need them. These upgrades are incredibly expensive and I'd prefer that money be in your pocket, not Apple's. By the way, if you do want to know how much memory I recommend that you should buy on your laptop, I'll post my video on that down below. Finally, Apple laptops are high quality devices. Be open to buying a secondhand model from Apple or a reputable reseller like Best Buy. You'll still get the manufacturer's warranty on it and you'll likely be able to extend that warranty by adding Apple's excellent Apple Care. And by the way, discounts stack. So if Best Buy offers $200 off a new MacBook Air, you'll find that discount cascades down to their secondhand models. And one more tip from today's sponsor, Ugreen. If you need extra ports on your Mac laptop, check out their USB hubs. They have a range of affordable hubs that will provide you with the ports that you're missing from your Mac laptop. Their RevoDoc Pro 210, for example, offers three USB-A ports, two HDMI ports that both support 4K60 and an Ethernet port. It also has an SD card reader, USB-C data port, and a second USB port for 100 watt charging. At the time of filming, it can be had for less than $50 if you're an Amazon Prime member. Link is below. Look, I personally bought a Ugreen hub with my own money before I was sponsored, so I can definitely vouch for their quality. All right. So here is who should buy each Mac laptop, starting with the MacBook Air 13 with M1. This is the laptop to get if you're looking for a Mac on a tight budget, as it frequently goes on sale for $750 US dollars. Now, even though this laptop was released many years ago, it is still competitive at that price point. It is a good all round device. The display is bright enough, color accurate and high resolution, so content on screen looks very crisp. Like all MacBooks, it is very well built with a great trackpad and a decent keyboard. And on that keyboard, this is the only MacBook still available with a keyboard that angles towards you. So if you are sensitive to the bottom of your laptop biting into your wrist, this is the one to get. Personally though, this is only an issue for me when I'm using my laptop on a plane's tray table without support for my arms. Like all Airs, there is no fan, so you hear no fan noise. It has decent battery life and doesn't get overly warm to the touch. 
Overall, the Air 13 with M1 at around the $750 price point is an ideal laptop for those doing mostly light tasks like browsing the web, working on office documents and consuming content. But I wouldn't buy it for much more. In 2024, for those use cases, there are just more modern laptops out there for under $1,000 that have pretty much all the benefits of this one, plus a larger display and a significantly faster processor. So. If you can't find the MacBook Air 13 with M1 at that price, then check out our website for the other laptops that we recommend. And this leads me to the MacBook Air 13 with M2. This laptop is a big step up from the Air 13 with M1. It's not just a slightly faster processor, it's a completely redesigned laptop. You've got a brighter, larger 13.6 inch display, which means you'll be able to see more content on screen. And even with its larger display, the M2 version actually weighs less than its predecessor. The laptop also looks more modern with smaller bezels, it's snappier with its M2 processor, and it's got a better webcam. This is the best laptop to get if you are primarily doing casual tasks on your laptop like browsing the web, working on office documents, or consuming content, but you want portability. Students, this is your dream laptop. The MacBook Air 15 with M2. This is a great device if your top priority is being as productive as possible from applications that just don't require a lot of performance. For example, working with spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, web applications, or Word documents. Lawyers, accountants, or consultants, you're going to love this one, as the larger screen on this laptop will make you more productive, and you just won't sacrifice that much portability for it. That's because the Air 15 is actually really small and light for a laptop with a 15-inch display. And because of its larger display, it's also a great laptop to get for those who struggle with visibility. That being said, if you are looking for the ultimate in portability and visibility, you may want to think about getting an Air 13 with M2 and adding an external monitor. But before running off to buy any of these MacBook Air laptops, I really want you to think whether it is truly the right choice for you. If you do anything now or in the near future that needs a bit of performance such as programming, video creation, music production, or design, you should buy a MacBook Pro instead. Do not try to make a MacBook Air into something it's not by specking it up with more memory. Yes, MacBook Airs are powerful enough to dabble in the tasks I just mentioned, but that is only if your projects are very simple that you're running on the laptop itself. For example, say you're doing programming where you're doing data science development, but your code is actually running in the cloud and not off your actual laptop. Overall, MacBook Airs are just not high performance machines. It's not just because they don't come with enough memory. The processors in them have significantly less memory bandwidth, which means they can't access their memory as fast. They also don't have fans to keep their processors cool, so in long running tasks, the processor will often be slowed to prevent it overheating. And their processors are just less powerful with less performance and graphics cores. On that note, let's get into the MacBook Pros. The MacBook Pro 14 is my personal favorite Mac laptop of all time. It is the perfect balance of performance and portability. If you're a software developer, designer, or you're in another creative field like film or music production and you need a laptop that you can frequently carry with you, you will love this one. The 14.2 inch screen is large enough to get real work done and you'll love the convenience of the additional fast ports that this laptop has. Plus, its speakers sound fantastic. Also, compared to the Airs, the Pro's keyboard feels a little bit more comfortable. They just feel like they have a little bit more travel. When it comes to the MacBook Pro 16, it's less portable, of course but you get significantly extra screen real estate, which will make you more productive. And its better cooling is able to allow the power hungry M3 Max chips to reach their full potential. But you need to be extremely careful as to which processor you buy in a MacBook Pro, as there are huge differences. Firstly, the MacBook Pro 14 with the base M3 chip. I would avoid this entirely. It starts at $1,600 and comes with only eight gig of memory. Even if you can find one of these on sale, it's just not worth it. Eight gig of memory in a laptop like this will severely limit you in almost every Pro application. And if you do want to upgrade to 16, like I said earlier, it's going to end up being the same price as a stock configured M3 Pro model on a sale. Upgrading to that model gets you more than just 8 gig of memory. It actually gets you 10 gig of memory because that model has 18. Its memory is 50% faster. It has more performance and graphics cores, and you get a very useful extra USB port on the right side of the laptop. And it supports more than one external display. Now, I am aware that this version of the MacBook Pro 14 is really just a replacement for the older MacBook Pro 13. And yes, it is better than that laptop at a similar price. But that laptop was insanely ancient and it still doesn't make this 8 gig of memory MacBook Pro 14 competitive in 2024. And if you do want to argue with me about this, just go buy that laptop, you deserve it. Let's now talk about the MacBook Pros, both the 14 and the 16 with the M3 Pro chip. 
This is the processor that I recommend for most power users, including programmers. From our extensive testing, this laptop is incredibly snappy. It gives you very long battery life, the laptop almost never feels warm to the touch, and in most performance tasks, it is dead silent. The reason for this is that the M3 single core performance is much faster than the prior generations, and it is more efficient. Apple did change the mix of cores though in these new processors. These M3 Pros now have less performance cores and more efficient cores than the prior generation. But because each of the individual cores are much faster, you still get around the same multi-core performance. The choice of whether to get the 14-inch or 16-inch MacBook Pro I leave up to you. As I said, one has more portability, the other will make you more productive. Now, for professional creators, unfortunately for you specifically, Apple has punched you in the gut with these new M3 processors. Your use case relies on hardware accelerated tasks, often utilizing capabilities like Apple's media encoding engine or their GPU cores. Because these tasks are already hardware accelerated, they are super fast so long as they have fast enough access to data. In these new processors, all but the highest end M3 Max chip now has significantly slower memory speeds. As you can see on screen, the M3 Pro chips now have 150 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, where they used to have 200. The lower end M3 Max chip has 300 gigabytes, where it used to have 400. This is why in video rendering, my MacBook Pro with the older M2 Pro 12 core significantly outperforms my newer MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro 12 core. Look on screen, it's even in the same ratio as the reduction in memory bandwidth. For professional creators, specifically where time is money, Apple is now really forcing you to buy the highest end M3 Max chip. And I only recommend buying that chip in the MacBook Pro 16. That's because the MacBook Pro 14 can't effectively cool it. I bought one with that configuration, so I know. The laptop got significantly hotter to the touch, it had less battery life, and the chip just didn't perform as well in that chassis. You can see it on screen. Less power is fed to the M3 Max chip when it is in the smaller MacBook Pro 14, likely because Apple knows it just can't be properly cooled in that chassis. But if you are doing video editing, like we are, a little bit of good news. You don't need all the extra GPU cores and ray tracing and even the faster single core speeds that these new processors have. So you can save some money by buying an older MacBook Pro 16 with either of the M2 Max chips. For your use case, those laptops will likely perform the same as these new ones. That's because they have the same number of media encoders and the same memory bandwidth. The only difference is the new M3 media engines do support AV1, but most people aren't using that yet. Now, if you desire portability as a professional video editor, you really have two options. Either look for an older M2 Pro equipped MacBook Pro 14, again, you'll save some money and it will likely perform better because of the faster memory access. Or buy a new MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro chip and just deal with the slower video rendering. I hope you found this video both comprehensive and useful. Links to all my recent videos on MacBooks will be down below, as well as links to our website, which has the best prices on all the laptops that we recommend. Well, that's all for today, folks. What did you think of my advice? Is there something I missed? Let me know with a comment down below. And take a moment to click the like button and get subscribed. It helps this channel grow, and a larger channel means that we can create more videos for you, which we love doing. Plus, it makes my mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.